Hello kids! Today, we're going to learn about the English for Quarter 4, Week 2 with the title, Writing a Reaction about a Story Read. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to write a reaction about a story read. Let's have a drill! Read each situation. Choose the appropriate ending by writing the letter of the correct answer. 1. Leia studies her lesson every day. She is very attentive in class. One day, the teacher gave them a test. A. She answered the test correctly. B. She did not pass the test. C. She got a low grade on the test. The correct answer is... 2. It was raining very hard. Ricky had no umbrella. He had no raincoat. He walked in the rain on his way home. A. He became very clean. B. He did not like the rain. C. He got sick. The correct answer is... 3. Lucille left the ingredients for today's menu. The dish should be served before lunchtime. A. She found alternative ingredient. B. She just ignored the missing ingredient. C. She did not cook the dish. The correct answer is... 4. Samantha watched television until midnight. She had no time to fix her school bag. She was very sleepy. A. She got up early. B. She got the highest score on the test. C. She felt sleepy in the classroom. The correct answer is... 5. It was vacation time. Nina and her parents planted vegetables in the backyard. In June, the vegetables were ready for harvest. A. They sold some of the vegetables in the market. B. They all ate the vegetables. C. They gave the vegetables to their neighbors. The correct answer is... Now let's have a review. Identify what is asked in each sentence. Write the letter of your answer. Number 1. The sequence of events that make the story sometimes includes conflict. A. Setting B. Theme C. Plot D. Characters The correct answer is Number 2. Message or moral of the story A. Setting B. Plot C. Theme D. Characters The correct answer is Number 3. Don't judge a book by its cover is an example of A. Mood B. Theme C. Setting D. Conflict The correct answer is Number 4. Can be people, animals, or fictional. A. Point of view B. Theme C. Setting D. Characters The correct answer is... Number 5. Time and place that the story will take place. A. Plot B. Setting C. Theme D. Characters The 
correct answer is Number 6. Nonfiction means A. True B. False C. Fake D. Humorous The correct answer is Number 7. A biography describes A. The hobbies and career of an individual B. The childhood experiences, family, and career of an individual C. The mistakes one has made in life D. The birth of an individual's children The correct answer is Number 8 to support a main idea, writers often use A. A persuasion to prove their point B. Facts and details to help prove their point C. Opinions and details to help prove their point D. Summaries of details to help prove their point The correct answer is Number 9 when the author gives you factual information, the author's purpose is to A. Inform B. Entertain C. Persuade D. Express The correct answer is Number 10 Which of the following could describe an autobiography? A. Famous writer's life told by another author B. A famous basketball player's wife sharing memories of her late husband C. Michael Jackson's mother describing his childhood D. Helen Keller writing about her difficulties of being blind all her life The correct answer is Let's read! The Shepherd Boy and the Wolf A shepherd boy tended his master's sheep near a dark forest not far from the village. Soon, he found life in the pasture very dull. All he could do to amuse himself was to talk to his dog or play on his shepherd's pipe. One day, as he sat watching the sheep and the quiet forest, he was thinking what he would do should he see a wolf. So, he thought of a plan to amuse himself. His master had told him to call for help should the wolf attack the flock, and the villagers would drive it away. So now, though he had not seen anything that even looked like a wolf, he ran toward the village, shouting at the top of his voice, Wolf! Wolf! As he expected, the villagers who heard the cry dropped their work and ran in great excitement to the pasture. But when they got there, they found the boy doubled up with laughter at the trick he had played on them. A few days later, the shepherd boy again shouted, Wolf! Wolf! Again, the villagers ran to help him, only to be laughed at again. Then one evening, as the sun was setting behind the forest and the shadows were creeping out over the pasture, a wolf really did spring from the underbrush and fall upon the sheep. In terror, the boy ran toward the village, shouting, Wolf! Wolf! But though the villagers heard the cry, they did not run to help him as they had before. He cannot fool us again, they said. The wolf killed a great many of the boy's sheep and then slipped away into the forest. Liars are not believed even when they speak the truth. Let us answer the following questions. 1. What is the title and who is the author of the story? Where did it happen? 2. What did the boy do to amuse himself? 3. What did his master tell him if there would be a wolf? 
4. What trick did the boy play to the villagers? 5. Do you agree with what the boy did upon fooling the villagers? Why or why not? 6. If you were the boy, would you do the same trick? Why? In this lesson, we are going to learn how to write a reaction about the story read. But before that, let me tell you first what is a reaction paper. A reaction paper is designed for you to consider carefully what you think or feel about something you read, seen, or watched. A reaction paper consists of three parts. First is the introduction, second is the body, and third is the conclusion. Now let us tackle this one by one. An introduction shows basic information like article, book, movie, title, or main ideas. So how are we going to write an introduction? First, write the title and the writer of the story. Then, tell a short summary about the story. In the body is where we highlight the main points and key supporting points. In writing the body, first, write the main idea with evidence and examples. Then, write two to three supporting details. The third part is the conclusion. It's a synthesis of key points. Based on what is read, no new information should be added. How to write a conclusion? First, tell about the theme of the story. Second, write how you felt while reading the story. Third, explain if you agree or disagree with the story in one to two sentences. Here is the example on how you're going to write a reaction paper about the story we read earlier. Introduction The story The Shepherd Boy and the Wolf was written by Aesop. This happened long time ago in a rural area where the main character tends herd of sheep in the pasture. The guide questions after the story can be your guide in writing your reaction. Guide questions number 2, 3, and 4 is for the body. Here's the example on how you're going to write the body. The shepherd boy got bored in what he's doing. He thought of amusing himself by running to the village while shouting that there are wolves. I think that this was not a good act because the villagers were not happy. However, he still did it in the second time. On the third incident that he shouted, there were real wolves but no one came to help him. I feel that the villagers are already angry, so they did not help him. The boy fooled them twice already and a third time would not happen. While the guide questions for number 5 and 6 will be used for the conclusion. Here is the example. In conclusion, we have to keep in mind that if we are known as a liar, even if we are telling the truth, people will always have a doubt or may not believe us. We need to always be truthful and be honest in everything we do. Let's have a practice. Read the short story. Make a brief reaction following the given format. The Monkey Who Wanted to Swim by Pablo D. Baltazar Once there was a monkey that could do so many things other animals could do. He could run fast, carry heavy loads, bark like a real dog, and moan like a goat, and many other things. He would always tell other animals that he is the most superior animal because he resembled a man. One day, he was walking near a river. Two big dogs in the water challenged him to swim. He didn't know how to swim, but there were other animals that heard the challenge and prodded him to join the race in the water. He accepted the challenge and jumped at once into the water. Alas, the water was so deep that he drowned. After reading the story, write the introduction, body, and conclusion about the monkey who wanted to swim. You may pause this video to answer the activity. Here are the example answers that you can use as your guide. Introduction The story The Monkey Who Wanted to Swim was written by Pablo D. Baltazar. The monkey was the main character here. He is very proud of himself. 
because he could do many other things that other animals could do. He thought of himself as a superior among the other animals. Buddy, the monkey was challenged by the two big dogs to swim in the river. I think that he was hesitant to take the challenge because he didn't know to swim. However, he didn't want to be embarrassed, so he accepted the challenge. Conclusion, as a result, the monkey was drowned. Pride can bring harm to anyone. Never be afraid to accept your weaknesses. Instead, believe in yourself and do what you think is right for you. For generalization, let us summarize what we learned today. A reaction makes you analyze a story. It makes you relate to your own experiences. Here are the steps in writing a reaction about the story read. First, identify the title, author, the main character, and the setting. Next, give brief summary. Keep it being objective and factual. Then, write the thesis statement. Do you agree or disagree with the story? Lastly, write the conclusion. It should be factual based on what is written and there will be no new information. Let us have the evaluation. Read the story and write your reaction about it. The Lion and the Mouse by Aesop A lion lay asleep in the forest, his great head resting on his paws. A timid little mouse came upon him unexpectedly, and in her fright and haste to get away, ran across the lion's nose. Roused from his nap, the lion laid his huge paw angrily on the tiny creature to kill her. Spare me, begged the poor mouse. Please let me go and some day I will surely repay you. The lion was much amused to think that the mouse could ever help him. But he was generous and finally let the mouse go. Some days later, while stalking his prey in the forest, the lion was caught in the toils of a hunter's net. Unable to free himself, he filled the forest with his angry roaring. The mouse knew the voice and quickly found the lion struggling in the net. Running to one of the great ropes that bound him, she gnawed it until it parted. And soon, the lion was free. You laughed when I said I would repay you, said the mouse. Now you see that even a mouse can help a lion. A kindness is never wasted. Write the introduction, body, and conclusion. You may pause this video to write your answer. Here are the sample answers. Please take note that your answers may differ with what were given in this video. Introduction The story The Lion and the Mouse was written by Aesop. The story happened in the forest. The characters are the lion and the mouse. The lion thinks that the big creature like him could not be helped by the small creature like the mouse. Buddy, the lion was awakened by the mouse. When the lion was about to eat the mouse, the mouse pleaded to let him go and told the lion that soon he will repay for his kindness. Days later, the lion was caught by the hunter's net. The mouse heard the lion's roar and helped him by gnawing the net and set him free. Conclusion I agree with what the mouse said. The mouse can help a lion which means that no matter how big or small you are, you can still help others. Thanks for watching! This is Teacher Jean. See you again with our next lesson. Goodbye!